Hello and welcome to the Third Option International live chat series 2.0, where we are having conversations with various facilitators and coordinators from active Third Option programs from throughout the world. I'm Sue Pinto, Assistant Director of the Third Option, again joined by Mike and Andrea Buckley. And we are really excited to welcome Dave and Bessie Rivera from the Third Option Philippines. Hello and good morning from our end in New York and good evening to you, Dave and Bessie. Yes. Hi, good evening as well. From our side, good morning to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a little early here, and um, but it's okay, not bad. We have a beautiful day to chat, so we're really excited. And, um, you know, we're hoping that these conversations are, that we're having are going to be a um, resource um, for those who are interested in starting a third option program and we're hoping that they can gain some knowledge of starting a program, implementing a program, and also even for those who are looking, who are in hurting marriages, who might be looking for a program, uh, we can highlight these different locations. So Dave and Bessie, as we were chatting last week, you know, I was really struck by your um, beginnings of your story. And it, it just had this beautiful arc of, you know, six, um, rags to riches from really struggling to successful marriage to just moving into and starting and mentoring in this third option program. So why don't you just kind of start us off with, you know, your beginnings, how, how and why did you get involved with the third option? And, you know, what, what brought you to the third option? Um, you know what, we, on our 25th year of marriage, you know, I just decided, I've had enough, you know, for 25 years, I've been bearing grudges against my husband. We've been to, to other um, weekend encounters, even a counseling, but, you know, I just wanted to give up. So I told Dave, Dave, I want you to move out. Well, at that time, when we started off, she told me with no uncertain terms that this was it. But um, of course, I was taken aback. And I was also angry at that time because I also had some issues. And as she had asked me to go through, and we went separate rooms, I, I didn't think that really separating was the answer. So while I was in the other room, and I decided that I was browsing through the internet, and I saw um, marriage building program. And in the marriage building program, it said, marriage encounter. I crashed we tried that. That, we did that, that didn't work. So I, then there was a retrovail. And so I said, I signed up for it and I was waiting for a response. There was no response. And in fact, I signed up for retrovail Philippines. They also didn't answer. But by that time we were going through uh, that rough stage. Um, I went through the Opus Day and and we also went through counseling and the family council. The family council didn't really work for me because I really felt that it was pitting myself with her. The other one was, I felt uh, more encouraged because the people, the Opus Dei were saying, no, God will answer your question. And in my prayers, I looked into the Diocese of Syracuse and it said, third option. And I looked, aha, and I looked into it and it says, 14 weeks. So my heart dropped and I said, this can never happen. I mean, it, it's not going to work. But I looked into it and I was saying, maybe, maybe this will work. Maybe this will work. And, and, it made, and we were still battling. It was an in and out, you know. I was skeptical actually when he broached that idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But by then, uh, we were in counseling. And by the time we were getting to counseling, we had a little bit of a reconciliation that, all right, uh, things were going to go well. So I broached this idea, she didn't like it, but I said, why don't we? But what was really the irony of all was, we were the head of the family life ministry here. And we broached it with um, the priest minister. We were talking about the third option. But my real objective was, I really wanted to fix this marriage. I really wanted to fix this marriage. So. Uh, we worked through it, and I broached it, and Father Henry got it 
down. Maybe you can talk about that, Bessie, and how Father yeah, Henry um, got that. Well, we told him about the kit, and uh, he said, oh, don't worry, I'll buy it for you, for the diocese. Really? So I, we asked my brother to purchase the kit from us in the States and bring it over in the Philippines. And that was, we received it in the mid-year of 20, 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, it took us about nine months before we finally get it off the ground starting in the parish of Father Henry, because Dave and I, you know, we needed to read through it, made sure that we understood what it is all about before we can um, begin to share it with other couples. I only had, I, I approached one couple, a friend of mine who's also a good facilitator. And so the two of us, we started working on this. And we started it um, March of 2013. And since then, from the two couples, uh, we increased in numbers. We've had at one time, we can have the first one, we had about 13 couples already. And then, so it was an up and down, roller coaster up and down. But since then, we managed. We're still alive. We're still having our third option. But I'd like to, I'd like to explain, when we started it, um, of course, um, I was just ready to do anything. But I wrote, uh, we wrote Pat Ennis, and Pat Ennis answered back. And she says, well, she looked at it, and she says, you're going to be all right. And I looked at the, the sheet of paper and then you're going to be all right. And she says, uh, it looks like you're on reconciliation. You'll be able to handle it. And so that was it. So that's the part yeah. by they real, a lot of faith that that's how we got through. Yeah. But the structure, we really didn't know how to go about it. It's very difficult because one, we were wanting to go to the program to be students ourselves. But at the same time, we were getting to be the ones that were going to, uh, teach the, all the topics each by itself and trying to get the framework. That's why it took a couple of months and how to, we had to understand, we got somebody that got us to teach how to do, uh, what do you call that? Uh, before you start? Um, orientation. Topic, orientation. Orientation. Mm -hmm. or, or when you have a topic. So we got somebody to help us do that. So that was, that was difficult. But the real difficult part was uh, the way she accepted or understood the program and the way I understood it, I was only taking it in bits and pieces, you know, as to work on what was wrong with, or, or you know, <laughs> it wasn't like it. So, and women not understand it the whole way, and I understood it a different way. And so, and, and honestly, there was a time when I really wanted to give up. I really desperately wanted to give up. One time I was driving, I wanted just to, uh, drive the car oh, yeah. straight to the wall, you know, and says, forget it. I just walk out. But uh, somehow I felt the car was more expensive. No, no, no. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so that's how it got. To and, um, humor, and, uh, humor is very important in marriages. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, I, yeah. I, you know, this is one thing that we also we always tell our participants also, and we we also share. You know, it doesn't mean that once you've been through this session that you everything is going to be all right. Because, you know, different issues, different things happen in a marriage. And so sometimes you forget, how are you going to handle this? So it's for us, well, we keep on going through this and that. As Dave said, we all, he almost gave up on this one. And I was just hanging on to it because we had this part as a coordinator of the Family and Life Ministry. And that was, was holding us together for me. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting because like, you know, you were the, you were the teachers, however, you were the students at the same time. And, and Mike and Andrea, I think, can you kind of chat about that? Yeah. I was just, as I was listening to that, I can so totally relate to that because um, when we introduced this program up at the Good News Center, where Mike was the director, he had that hat that he wore, um, you know, as the administrator and you know the person in charge and then at the evening meetings he had to just be a husband and part of the team and so for a while i was judging that um he wouldn't take off his mask he wouldn't let down his guard and really share uh, but i could understand why it put put him in a vulnerable position to uh, have to be that way but um right and you agreed and but once it happened it was uh 
then from then on, it really was easy to do. And we share that. We share our story with everybody. Um, but yeah. you have to be real. You have to be a student. Right. I had to make the decision. Am I going to sit here and just pull the strings and have these programs and other people do them? Or am I going to be an active part of it? Which means I have to show my warts. You know, everything has to be, you know, genuine from my mind and my heart. And I decided through, really through the prompting of Andrea and the Holy Spirit that I really needed to do this in order for it to be genuine. And it, it really helped our marriage. It really did. So just like you, um, you can talk about it or you can experience it. Live and when it. people experience and share that, it does come across that, hey, these people aren't just from the outside looking in. We're really there. And I think that's so important. And I commend you for that decision that you made to be able to work on your own relationship as well as offer it to other people because that's a gift to the people that you have touched. Well, well, one thing I wanted to share with you was, you know, when we had to do that mentoring and we had to share our story and then we had the topic and we had to go through it and we went through tell how we started the middle part and how it ended. And as we shared it for the first time, we were crying, you yes. know, we, we were deeply, we were, crying. We were yeah. really crying and, and we were saying to each other, you know, I, I, I'm really sorry. I mean, you know, all this. And, and we went through the next ones. Of course, there were the up and downs. And then you're not doing it this way. You're not this way. This way. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> somehow, somehow we got through. So that's, that's good. Yes. That, that sharing part, it's like releasing also whatever grudges you have and being able to really communicate. To you. you know, I was able to tell him how I really felt. And he was able to tell it to me also. And that's why we both cried on the first time we started reading it to each other as we practiced it. Mm. And you know, when we were sharing, other, uh, also other couples also told, uh, you know, the principle of redo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, we've been probably through one or two cycles. And these guys that we were mentoring and telling, and they were saying, you know, this is what we do, we, we redo. And I was like going, what's that again? I mean, you know, I mean, we were going through a cycle and I wasn't doing it. And they were doing it so, so lightly. And I says, and this gives you a little bit of an encouragement that, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and everybody helps and it becomes very light and everybody. Somehow, it helps a lot for everybody to get through. It does. I, I want to actually, that's a great point. And we've, we've talked about that many, many times. And while you earlier prefaced or uh, referenced um, Marriage Encounter and Retrovi, you know, those programs are very valuable to people. They, uh, they can work for people. They have worked for people. Third option is just another, op is just another um, option, you know, for, for couples to try. So there's a variety of marriage um, relationship programs out there. And, and sometimes it's a matter of finding the one that fits, I think. And, um, you know, but you just talked about how, you know, you sharing and then you're listening to other couples. And I think we've said this every time, and I'm sure that I will say this at every single live chat conversation that I think one of the biggest um, pluses and values of the program is that whole couples, you're in with other couples. It's not just you and let's say a counselor, which is certainly valuable, but there is something that's really magical about having other couples and listening to their stories and you're listening to their stories, they're listening to your story. And there's that immediate connection. Oh, I can relate to what that couple is saying. I understand how she's feeling. I totally understand what he's saying. So that's the beauty of the third option program, I think is, is that it's, it's groups of people. And even in your case and Mike and Andrea's or any of our cases where if you're actually teaching, you're actually living it and you're still learning at the same time. And that is the beauty of it. Um, you know, I, I know when we were talking last time, you guys were talking about how you, you started the program, you were running it, and then you kind of took a break from it. And you, you, there were a couple of years where you kind of handed it off to somebody. I'm just interested in that because you said something I thought was really important that if you, um, you know, take a break from the program as coordinators or facilitators, you said something really important when you handed it off to something. Um, Bessie, can you talk about that for a little bit? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, well, you see, because of my, the, the world that I have to do at the Family and Life Ministry, I thought that I might uh, turn over the 
to develop one, the coordinator position of the third option to another mentor couple. Um, but then for about two years, uh, even if I ask, well, when are we going to have our cycle? When are we going to have our cycle? And somehow it never happened. So, you know, you can choose your mentor. It is best to choose, to choose a mentor couple because they know how it goes, the administration and stuff like that. But you need to choose wisely also somebody who has the, the drive or, you know, that will be able to approach, like in our case, to approach other parishes and even the parish priest if it's okay to begin uh, the third option cycle in that part, you know, those things. So I think that's one of the uh, things I learned from, from this. Um, now, now, because I'm lucky that well, this pandemic is actually good for us in the sense that now we have it online and um, we're able to reach a lot more. So I asked all the vicariate coordinators in our diocese to help promote the third option. And now we have about 40 couples plus the new ones, 40 new ones, and then the recur recurring participants of third options before. So sometimes I would have about 48 or 49 couples attending. Wow, Mike, Mike, that must make you feel like floating away. <laughs> it, it really does because uh, third option is so powerful. Uh, mm -hmm. It touches people that want to improve their marriage. If, if one is there, they come and they drag their feet and the, usually it's the guy in many cases, um, they'll sit there with a long face. But once they start hearing other tough guys start to melt a little bit, they have that courage to say, you know, this isn't so bad. It's not, it's not, it's not giving me pain to do this. Sometimes it is painful, uh, especially for men to hear, you know, yeah. to hear talk about things. But when you hear someone genuinely be touched by their experience, it, it really has a, a power to it that makes them want to participate even more. And, uh, you know, we, we had, we had a, a couple I can yeah, think of yeah, now. Yeah. He has since passed away. He was in a motorcycle gang. You know, <laughs> he did all sorts of stuff. He had all sorts of stories that he told. Sorry. And, <laughs> and uh, it touched him. And he would choke up when he shared. Because he didn't know how to act. You know, this teaches people and their families how to relate to each other. And, and when you've never known how to do that, you know, he used to say, well, I used to treat my wife as a piece of property, you know, doing this and that. And, and it's powerful to see the transformation that takes yeah. place. He would be moved to tears and you could hear a pin drop in that room. The other men had so much respect for him uh, and they'd go up to him afterwards in the break. And he, he, every time they presented, somebody would go up to him afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's moving. It is. And, yeah, it's really special. Go ahead, Bessie, go ahead. Well, it's just, uh, you know, in this sessions that we had uh, online, we actually, from the sharings, there's a, a couple who said that because of the lockdown, they were, both of them are feeling depressed. Mm -hmm. And so they actually said that they're thankful that there is a third option because it, you know, it helped them. They're, they they are fighting already because they're both depressed. But at least now there there's something for telling them. Okay, well there's something that can be done about it. You can talk about it, and especially we're talk, we talk, we just talked about the bill of rights and uh, about responsibility. So it was good. That's one of the feedback. And then yesterday, uh, a guy approached me and said, "You know, can you help?" Uh, me because my wife and I we attended and my wife keeps telling me you're the one you're the one see that's you that's you that's you <laughs> <laughs> you know we it happens right? well, like bring your back part telling see that's you that's you no you should do that <laughs> no it, I'm glad you brought up the zoom because I, I remember in our last conversation um, and, and it's so nice that you to hear how so many people are interested and it's spreading out around in your country um, you had talked about Zoom and you talked about some of the challenges of in-person meetings and, and how Zoom seems to actually work really well. Yeah. Um, the breakout rooms that Zoom is able to do 
exactly is able so that my facilitator mentor couples they can reach out to 10 or 12 couples at one time so they can do their group sharing and um, so it feels like um, you know very personal to them they can really open up because it's a small group rather than having them as a one big 48 participants so I'm thankful that Zoom has its breakout rooms I think that. that's a good point. We, we, after doing so many cycles of third option uh, in our facility, I think having it in the comfort of your home too, where the couples on Zoom, they can go to the breakout room, but they're still in their own home. They're relaxed, they're comfortable. They're not really sitting right next to somebody. I would think that's a very good environment conducive to, to letting them uh, ask questions or share. I think it's a great thing. Yes. Yeah, it's it's a blessing actually out of the whole pandemic and the and the lockdowns that that we've been able to open this up to Zoom and we've done our first live chat go around through um, Zoom with us. So it's been really really nice. Um, Dave and Bessie, you know, let's talk about some of the challenges that you had uh, implementing the program. I know there were a couple of things. You know, we were talking about your language and how you present it. Also, um, you know, the Zoom and how you didn't have as many people in person. You seem to have quite a few couples coming in Zoom. Uh, so talk to us about even just, um, you know, adapting it to your culture. There was that whole wood stove story. You kind of adapted it to a fit in your uh, community. Yeah. Well, what we did was on the, we changed the wood stove to the story of the, the husband um, bowing uh, wanting to buy a power tool and and the wife wanting to buy something for herself like a dress and it and how inappropriate somebody was spending it so we changed it to a more identifiable situation and how they could they could uh, use this situation yeah and some of the skits the role playing we used our own language uh, tagalog and english so very contemporary uh, language, some, something that they can uh, adapt to. In fact, during the Zoom, we had um, a role playing and then uh, they would use expressions very common. And you wow, you know, things you know, like I that. Mean, lo local would, ways of doing local it. Local ways of saying it. Right. And, uh, right. you you, know. They literally read it and they, they say it in the way they, they naturally, you know, the play acting. And it was so funny because it sounded so real, like as if they were fighting or they were getting along. <laughs> and so it, it, and it, it looked so real. It wasn't really, we were saying, hey, that I could relate to that. And that, that is something that I can see myself. So those were things that we, we transitioned in from a mixture of the local vernacular and also English. And that's how we, we made it. We changed the stories so that it would, be adapted to our local uh, story and we talked about it and so there, those are one of the things that we did and and when we have zoom one of the things that we do is we have an evaluation of zoom after the, the group we, we evaluate whether did we do well well did we miss out on the certain things we said or what happened during the group sharing yeah sharing. and then so the mentor couple said, oh, we did well, you know, there are some people, uh, yeah. And, and if somebody came in and we knew their history, we'd say, oh, please take care of them because they're coming in this way and they may not be sharing. So, and, and so, so the, the groups took care of each other. So, but the nice thing also about Zoom is that when you break out into the breakout groups in each of the sessions, they don't guarantee that each of those within their friends would still be within the breakout group mm -hmm. uh, groups. Somehow the groups just broke out and then we didn't really know who it would be. It automatically just changed by itself. Okay, so that's... those were things. Uh -oh. Go ahead, Andrea. Well, I have a, qu a question for Dave and Bessie. Uh, since you've had this program since 2012 and probably started your first uh, sessions maybe the following year um, and it is an ongoing program which is one of the things that attracted us to this it becomes the support system this that we didn't have anywhere in our communities anything to go to on an ongoing basis first of all it was free 
And then second of all, you could just keep going until you didn't want to go. Mm -hmm. And so my question is, um, as presenters and, and now coordinators and leaders, you've been doing this for quite a few years, participating, mm -hmm. um, as we said earlier, as a couple. And uh, people sometimes have asked us, we've always encouraged them, come through two cycles, three cycles. And by then, now our teams were the ones that were continuing cycle mm -hmm. four, cycle five. Now they're helping us. And um, we've been asked, well, um, why would you do that? And uh, what benefit is it? And so we have found that we always have new material. It seems as though every time we're going to present uh, power or uh, listening, we have a fight about something that we <laughs> had and we're not communicating. You know, something almost every time we were ready to present, we would say to our group, well, we got new material. We thought we had it all. We, we thought we were just going to pick up our talk and read you the old talk, but guess what happened this week? So I wonder if you found, uh, I think that's, that's something unique to third option. It, it's a growing, ongoing life program. Does that happen to you? Yes, yes, very much. Uh, but we always fight about it too sometimes. <laughs> but I think my leading, my leading is, especially as mentor couples or coordinators, I think the enemy really wants you to fight. And so you'd give up. And so what I really do is I do say my own silent prayer. And I, I see it as a sign that uh, the enemy really wants to break us up. And so... And uh, he doesn't know that God knows more and then you can use this for, for what can be done. And it also, in a way, humbles us because it means that we really have to start off over and over again. Uh, the, the, the dying to self, the change, and looking, and looking in their daily, uh, at the end of the day, what did I really do? Was I really the kind person that I, I promised myself to change? And is it really working? And then, you find that through prayer and, and it's gotten to that. But the more important thing that I'd like to share also is, it's also brought about a lot of respect with, you see the horizontal part with me and Bessie, the vertical part with us and our children also develop. And so the Bill of Rights are also transmu transmuted or transposed to our children. They also had the right to be respected, to disagree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, and all that. So we brought that down. And I said, you know, we can't, we can't have this the way just for us. That Our children should have this. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they, they'll see this as just something between you and me, and it's really not working. And so, and that's how it, it developed. And I think that's maybe something that can be shared more than the third option. And, um, you know, the mentor couples and us, we've developed a certain relationship because we've been sharing, you know, uh, yes, even our mentor couples, other mentor couples sometimes tell us, you know, it's difficult to, to share right now because we just had a fight last, last night or prior to this. And so you begin to be more um, sympathetic to them, you empathize and then say, it's, it's okay. So um, because of that relationship, sometimes can you cover up for them? And they would, some other couples would say, yes, you know, we would gladly do it. And uh, somehow they have something to share about that particular topic, even if, for example, they did not really prepare for it. Mm -hmm. And it was just um, on the spot. So, uh, again, the secret ingredient, God being there, always inspiring us um, in, in, in this, the third option, really we attest to that one, and that's what we always say. Remember about the secret ingredient. Those are great points, uh, Dave and Bessie, because as Dave was sharing about the vertical part, the vertical part to the children is that vertical part to God. And that is God's plan for us to live the, the principles of third option is godly. And when we do that, we are living out our sacrament. And that's, that's so important. And sometimes when people come to third option, they really don't have that grounded. They're not grounded in their faith. But they find that that, that that secret ingredient has a stronger part in their growth and in their relationship than they ever did. And it's an evangelistic opportunity for people to have that in their lives. That, that's tremendous. It's a tremendous effect, you know, we believe anyway. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. yeah, you know, it's, it's, I really was actually happy when you said that, Dave, about um, that vertical, because I was thinking, you know, all along, it, yes, it's a marriage program, but ultimately it's a relationship program and relationships go parent to child, uh, coworker to coworker. I, I mean, it reaches just friend to friend, whatever it reaches all across. So any of the skills, they're universal. They're, they're for any relationship that you have and, and um, you know, and even with yourself. So mm -hmm. I, I think that was really important. And you know what, I really liked, um, you know, you had talked about one time that a college student came and I just thought that was great because, you know, college students, you're thinking, well, this is a marriage program. Why would a college kid show up? And, and again, I think it goes back to the universal uh, notion that, you know, these are skills that we learn to work with any relationship. Just, can you just tell our audience about that? experience um we had it in one of the um parishes where there's a university this near it and uh, because it was just said the third option and then it didn't say much probably didn't read that it. it's a marriage building program so we were there we were already in the talking talking discussing presentation uh group sharing that's when he said you know i'm a college student and I am interested because I want to know to learn what to expect. I think the topic at that time was expectations. Um, how can I, you know, uh, find the relationship and establish this? And he was like, "Oh, this guy's a college student. We didn't realize, it, you know, because he just walked in." And um, it got us to thinking that maybe the you can tweak the learnings at the third option and make it um, for the young people about to get married, the young ones, college students, or uh, those who are just, have just graduated and newly working, stuff like that. So, well, uh, uh, Bessie, didn't you share that you also work in the pre cana program in your diocese? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. that's what, that's really what third option can be. It can be a model for marriage in a pre cana setting, and uh, it, it really works, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I've actually introduced some of that learnings, a little bit of that incorporated it in the pre cano um, workshops that we have. And um, when uh, I would also give some counseling to those applying for knowledge of marriages, I would also try to, uh, you know, tell them about the beauty of marriage and trying to reconcile, adding a little bit of that, um, the, the learnings as a third option. In fact, uh, I was, I gave a pre cana I mean, a pre cana to a couple who's been previously married. And then the other one, the husband, the man is just, uh, is a widower. And instead of giving the usual pre cana module, I gave them some of the third option topics like the Bill of Rights and about expectations. And they were really, really so happy about it because this is something that to them, they can relate to because yes, they've been in a relationship before and then talking about this, then they can build up or enhance this second marriage. Yeah, we, we were talking about pre cana as something that's built up in the in the parishes, in the, in the diocese, right? Well, the diocese has what they call as pre cana and we also develop what they call as post cana the post cana is, we now have the third option so that the families that are newly married, uh, the young couples write down each other. They now have options. So they can say, third option, uh, now open this parish. Uh, who'd like to sign up? And so it, it, it gains interest. So people, and they talk about marriage building programs. And so um, right now, we're thinking we can't just have pre cana but we must have post cana And the post cana is not waiting until there's trouble. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't wait uh, until something happens, then, then you, you, you think, oh, we should have had this. Many of us have expressed, oh, if only we had this earlier. Yes. Only if somebody had this pre cana we wouldn't be into this trouble. We'd, we'd have a better foothold, we'd better understand each other. We can talk about expectations on many things like sex, uh, birth control, natural birth control, um, 
in-laws, outlaws, and, and, and everything, you know? And, but if you've got these expectations well-grounded on something that's realistic, then you, you bring it down to a post Kena, and then we're saying now, yeah, yeah, this is how we, we're wanting it to be. And so now the third option is part of the post Kena program of the diocese. Oh, and that's so wonderful. That's, that's yeah. great. That is great. You know, it's great to hear because, you know, the third option, it, it, you know, it's, there is a structure, there's a guide uh, to follow. However, there are opportunities to adapt it. And whether it's into a, your language or whether it's doing that pre cana into a post cana which is brilliant, actually. And, um, you know, and then we do have various other manuals. We have, you know, the Catholic manual, we have the Christian manual, we also have a secular manual. So, and we have a youth manual. So, you know, speaking to the college student right there, you know, there's those opportunities that, yes, it can be brought to a variety of communities uh, for a variety of purposes. So that's the beauty of the program is that there are some different choices. And, you know, for somebody who is, who does not maybe um, practice a certain faith, there may be organizations who out there that can offer a, a more secular program and, and it's still beautiful because it all works in repairing, improving relationships. So, um, you know, while, since we're, I'm sorry, go ahead. Did somebody want to say something? No, no. no okay. Since we're, um, to tie up our conversation, I do want to highlight your program. Um, so I want to, share some of the information where, whether it is um, groups can contact you that are trying to set up a program, or if there are couples who are interested in attending your third option program, uh, the information is there to contact Bessie at um, the email provided and phone number. Also, um, you know, we just want to kind of give a little information about your program that it is free and that again is the beauty that Pat Ennis, when she authored this program, she wanted it free. She wanted it to be available to anybody. And, you know, and, and that's so important. Now, there are organizations who do ask for donations and the donations are uh, not mandatory. Of course, anybody can go. Um, the donations are probably used for kind of administrative work to kind of keep certain things going. Um, and that is totally fine. Um, yours is free. You do have in-person and virtual. Um, I, I can't remember, are you guys, did you just recently start up in person again? Um, no, not really, not, not yet. Not yet. Uh, okay. But what we do is um, some people call me and uh, I talk to them personally. I, mean, I talk to them on the phone or we, we uh, do video chat if there's any problem and then, you know, uh, just give them a little bit of support and encourage them to attend the third option. Okay. Okay. And uh, also, mm -hmm. you know what? So I've had calls for uh, messages from priests who refer to me uh, a couple who are in trouble, and so that's when I call them and then we talk. Persons, and if it's possible, you know, one time I the lockdown was not yet um, implemented, so I was able to talk to them, you know, have a one-on-one -on -one counseling with them. Yeah, wonderful. And, and that is, again, how actually the whole pandemic and, and the shutdowns, that the blessing out of it, the silver lining, you know, Zoom, we can still connect. So, and you can still find these services. So Facebook, your social media, you're on Facebook and Viber. Can you explain Viber? What's that? Oh, well, well, Viber is another chat group, um, something like um, Messenger Chat also. And um, so this is where uh, we have, I made a Viber community group, the Third Option Philippines. And I sent them out to all those, uh, the participants, the new ones that we have, those on Zoom, so that all messages, um, the worksheets, and some additional takeaways about the sessions, that's where I post them. Um, and then other things, the posters and things like that. So, so that uh, in this way, even if let's say a participant may have missed out one session, at least, you know, oh, so that's what I missed. And that they okay. have something that they can look forward to for the next session. Yeah, that's great. That's great to have that 
ability to put something up there. So um, just again, some final thoughts that, you know, the third option, uh, we're hoping that these discussions are helpful to any couple looking for a program or any um, person who might be so inspired to bring the third option program to their area through an organization or through their parish or whatever. So here's all, kind, our, all of our emails. We are always interested in hearing back from anybody. Please feel free to comment, to contact us, ask questions. We're, we're happy to chat. We're excited because the program is a great program. And um, more information if you want to check out our Facebook page where we have our previous chats, our live chats, and we also have a YouTube channel where you can um, see all of our live chats as well. You can subscribe. And these new live chats will be going up soon. We are, uh, again, hoping that these live chats with facilitators and coordinators will be really beneficial to anybody that's thinking, oh, I don't know, do I, this program looks decent, maybe we should try it, and hopefully this will help. And there are so many people that you can contact, whether it's uh, myself, I can set you up, we can set you up with Mike and Andrea, we can chat, kind of talk through the program, or even Dave and Bessie, yay, <laughs> yes, the Philippines. Sure. So um, Dave and Bessie, we can't thank you enough. It's, it's really exciting to chat with you. We're thrilled to have met you and to um, thank see you very much. For seeing me here, we're so glad that we were able to communicate. I mean, to keep in touch with you. We've so wanted to, when we were in the, the States, we just weren't able to. So I'm happy that we are now in touch with each other. Connected. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah. It's great. It's great to share our experiences, no matter where we live. You know, I know you can't use the wood stove story. It sounds to me that you don't have snow in the Philippines, you know, so you don't get to experience that cold feeling, right? So, <laughs> so we do have I'm, floods. I do. Floods yeah. yeah, floods instead. So, you know, I, 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 commend you, I commend you for adapting this to something that made sense to the people because to just come up with an example that doesn't really fit, um, that's, that's good that you you address that. That's good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, thank you. Dave and Bessie, thank you. And, and congratulations you. on all of your outreach. You know that you've helped, you know, at this point, probably hundreds of couples and Mike and Andrea, again, who've helped hundreds of couples. And, um, you know, we appreciate your willingness to chat with us. We appreciate that you're doing this in your community and we're thankful. So, Thanks again, everybody, and, and um, glad you could join us on our live chat series. Uh, keep, um, you know, keep a lookout on our Facebook pages and keep up to date with what we have going on. Thanks so much. Take care. All right. Thank you. Worth hearing from you again. Yes. Yes. Thank you. All right. Okay. See you.